Hey, what's up everyone? Once upon a time, I picked up a Space Invaders Arcade 1-Up for 175. The game list wasn't that impressive on this one, and it was basically just Space Invaders and Space Invaders in color. So I thought, how do I add more games? A 60 in 1 board. I saw them going for like $50, and I thought, whoa, that's the mod I gotta do. All my vertical cabinet dreams will come true. I ended up splurging too, and getting a new deck, new joystick, and a new trackball, and more buttons, and decent switches, and speakers, and an amp, and a power supply, and a lit marquee, because they used to not give us lit marquees. Suddenly this project really began adding up. But at least I'll be able to play 60 of the greatest classics of all time, right? Well, sort of. Right off the bat, gonna try Miss Pac-Man with Speed Hack. I knew in the back of my mind going into this, I was making a compromise with the 60 and 1 and this setup. Many of the games are meant for 4-way joysticks and many of them are meant for 8-way joysticks. This isn't going to be acceptable to any purists. As it is, the joystick here is an 8-way, and it does make the game feel a bit slippery. I feel like I'm playing on ice. You have to be extremely precise taking turns, and even playing careful and precise, you still make mistakes. But it's not a problem for every game, though, I hope. There's still 59 other games. Let's just go through the list. We have Miss Pac-Man, Galaga, Frogger, Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., Donkey Kong 3, Galaxian, Dig Dug, Crush Roller, Mr. Do, Space Invaders, Pac-Man, Galaga 3, Gyrus, Tank Battalion, 1942, Ladybug, Burger Time, Mappy, Centipede, Millipede, Junior Pac-Man, Pengo, Phoenix, Time Pilot, Super Cobra, Hustler, Super Panic, Super Breakout, New Rally X, Arkanoid, Kicks, Juno First, Xevious, Mr. Dew Castle, Mooncresta, Pinball Action, Scramble, Super Pac-Man, Bomb Jack, Shaolin Road, King and Balloon, 1943, Van Van Car, Pac-Man Plus, Dig Dug 2, Amadar, Zaxxon, Puyan, Pleiades, Gunsmoke, The End, 1943, Congo Bongo, Jumping Jack, Miss Pac-Man, again, these are the hacked versions or things you can change the preferences on, make the dot hearts. So this board is more like a 55 in one. Another game I really wanted is Donkey Kong. This is one arcade one-up will never make. Nintendo will never allow it. So I am glad to have it on here. Donkey Kong plays pretty well. I don't notice the eight-way stick messing me up, really. Walking up and down ladders is kind of a pain in the ass, but it's part of the challenge, I guess. A lot of these games, they ask you to put your initials in. It, this board doesn't save it for me. I've heard people say it saves it for them, but it doesn't save anything for me. One of my favorite games on here is Arkanoid. The trackball works pretty well on this.
What kills me about this, though, is the continue feature doesn't work. When you run out of lives, there's a counter and it asks you to do a button command, but it doesn't work. I've heard if you turn off all the other games on the board, turn off free play and add a coin button, then I can continue. But I haven't gotten around to trying all that yet. Frogger seems totally fine. I don't do any unintentional things here. I can actually do well in this game. I always want to enjoy burger time a lot more than I actually do. Getting on and off ladders is a chore. Going up and down on ladders and going all the way so I can simply walk off in a timely manner is a chore. Especially on an 8-way joystick. Honestly, not sure if it's the 8-way joystick or burger time just sucks. Centipede was one of the main reasons I got a trackball. But I guess I suck at this one too. Pinball Action was a nice bonus game I never heard of and it actually works with my setup. Right and left on the joystick moves the flippers, which is dumb because then you can't use both flippers at the same time and the buttons do nothing, but the trackball works as a joystick too, so you'll be able to move both flippers at the same time making the game playable. Shaolin's Road. I never played this in my life. It's like bad dudes, I guess, but it does predate it. Apparently, this game was released in North America titled Kicker. It's honestly it doesn't feel like anything special right now. I kind of just want to die. Come on, kill me. The game selection screen really kills this board for me. You can't get there when you need to because there is no exit button or button combination to get you back to the game selection screen. You have to die to go back to the menu. Even when you're trying to continue on certain games, you have to come back to the game selection screen and reselect the game you're playing to hopefully continue. Gunsmoke is louder than the other games, and with my button layout it makes the shooting very awkward. I suppose if I played it long enough my brain could get used to the awkward buttons here, but then I feel like I'd be deprogramming myself from playing other games. 
So I'm just not going to play this one ever. Galga is cool. Lots of space shooters from this era are on this board. I don't feel hindered by the eight-way joystick here. There's also no attract mode. If you leave the machine running, it cycles through the games on its own chronological order. But it always goes back to the hideous game selection screen between short previews. Overall, it's still a good collection of vertical classics. 60 and 1 is far from perfect. It's not quite the all in one solution to your vertical cabinet needs, but it is fun. I think a lot of people would be happy with it. There's compromises to many of the games. You just have to be realistic about your expectations. Depending on your setup, you're only going to be able to play about half the games. You do get a lot of notable games. When people come over, they can get a kick out of seeing all these old titles. They don't usually understand the difference between four-way and eight-way joysticks. It's nothing too serious. Twin galaxies won't validate any high scores on this setup. But I'm not trying to be Billy Mitchell here. In 2023, the best use for a 60-in-1 is to just set it up as a four-way machine and turn off the eight-way games and a lot of the more forgettable titles. You know, get yourself a Pandora's box, 516 vertical shooter, or get a Raspberry Pi and put a nice vertical image on it. But you can do some cool things with the 60-in-1. You can turn off all the other games and make it a standalone. Like if you just want to play Donkey Kong and have an old cabinet, you can turn off all the other games and it boots up as Donkey Kong with no game selection menu constantly popping up. Anyhow, that's it for this video. Like and subscribe for more content on this channel, and I will see you guys soon with another video.